All right, here's three broken multimeters. I picked up on eBay for $25 for all three. Just as a little project. And they're a 8020A, an 8024A, and a, what is this one, 73? That's the part. This has already come off of it. Model 77. So these two looks like they've got display problems. So they may not be repairable, but hopefully there's some parts that I can salvage. We'll see on those. This one seems to be working. Got a battery in it. It's got a display, just the missing characters thing. So should be able to get that working fairly quickly with a normal um, uh, display cleaning. So I'll probably start with that one. This also has a cracked side here on the case, which I'll just glue up. So I'll take them all apart just to see what they look like on the inside. These, I don't know about these, but this one definitely will get working. And these may be true parts machines. All right, I'm taking a look at the, these two meters. I got the two old manual ranging. This is the 8020A that I'm looking at right now. I also have a 824A. It's right here, taken apart. And both of these meters seem to have bad displays, so that's kind of the death knell of these things. Is you can't really. I don't think you can find those anywhere new. So you basically have to buy another meter uh, and replace the display. So I'll just see if I get this working. So this one with a good display out of my 8022A that I'd already gotten and got working. Display comes on, but I'm not getting any readings. No voltage. Uh, so that actually happened on this one too. And it wound up being a, uh, this resistor right here, the input resistor was gone. It's completely missing. Plus a bunch of the mobs down, down there are missing. So let's take a look at this. These two resistors, these are the two input resistors. One should be a 10K, one should be a 100K. So let's take a look and see what they measure now. All right, I've got uh, measuring the input here on this terminal, positive terminal. Now that should directly connect to uh, both of these resistors on this side. So you got zero ohms there and zero ohms there. So on the back side of these we should be able to measure the resistance of the resistor. That's 106k which is right. This should be a 10k. It's reading infinity. So that resistor is bad. Maybe it's a 1k. <coughs> yeah that should be a 1k and that's reading infinity. So that resistor is open, which would be one reason why we can't read anything on the d display. So I will swap that resistor out and uh, see if we can get this meter working. Alright, luckily I found when I worked on uh, this earlier meter, I ordered a bunch of the, uh, I ordered five of these because one was dead, and that's reading right at 1K, which is what should be 2 watt wire wound resistor. So that's what goes in here, right there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, desolder this. This resistor. And uh, pull it out of there. Then I'm thinking that'll get this working. Maybe not perfectly, but uh, that'll be the first step anyway. So I'll go ahead and pop it out of there. Put a new one in. See what it looks like. All right, that seems to have fixed this one. So. Bad display uh, and a bad input resistor. Yeah, I measured uh, this one here and it's definitely open. 
So uh, that is the reason why we're getting we weren't getting any readings. Now let's see. Let's, let's measure some stuff. Here's a uh, this is a 1K resistor. It reads. Uh, let's see. 981 ohms, which is about right. Uh, let's see, let's get some, some DC, so kind of a dead battery. Reading 7.7 .7 volts, verse 7.8, the negative sign. Going to AC. Uh, 134? Ah, that's not right. So, maybe it still needs some, uh, some switch cleaning. But, at least it's reading voltage. So, uh, that partially fixed the problem. And I'll go take a look. Uh, I may have a bad capacitor or something in here, given that a high reading. That's not right. Try uh, adjusting. Yeah, need some uh, calibration, but I'll do that. But at least it's measuring everything now, and. I did have to replace one of the uh, um, fuses, and it's measuring uh, zero ohms on going through the fuses, so they're both good. So we're getting there. All right, got this one working, and this is the uh, 8020A. Now it has the borrowed display from my 8022A still installed, and I think I'm going to leave it in there for a while at least. Um, when I bought the 8022A, I really wanted to get an 8020A because that was, I think, the very first um, successful digital multimeter. So I kind of wanted to add it to the collection, but I couldn't find one at the time. So now I have this one. It's I've calibrated it. It's working perfectly. It's accurate. It just had a bad display. So now with a good display, here's reading. There's the line voltage, and before when I had it on this, it was reading 140 volts on this range. Uh, I think that's just because it was uh, sitting on this um, towel here, which may be slightly moist or something, and it was causing the reading to be inaccurate. So now it's back in the case with its uh, shield reinstalled. It's reading very accurately. So, yeah, I think I'm going to leave this one as is. I just need to find a working display for this one, but it's perfectly good, too. So, and I borrowed the tilt bill off to put it on a different machine, but I'll put it back on here to make this one complete. So there we go. There's the uh, restoration of the parts only. Uh, 1024 or 1020A multimeter from 1979. And uh, glad to have this one added to the collection. So thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.